brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Only One Mike Podcast, called Javar Brooklyn Dre, J. Rob and the Hatties in the building. How y'all doing, fellas? What up, what up, what up? All right, y'all. What we got on the docket today, we're going to talk about that All-Star game. Fanny Willis, heated moments in court. And Ben Crump taking up the uh, Malcolm X case, man. So um, let's go ahead and get into it, fellas. I know we haven't been together, you know what I mean? Fantastic Four here in a while, so listen. Let's get into the All Star Game, brothers. Because I, Silver should be fired, man. Yeah, I didn't even realize there was an All Star Game. My nephew told me this like Saturday night, and I'm like, "What All Star Game?" So I don't know. It's because I don't watch too much network television. Was this thing really promoted like that, or, or what, man? See, yeah, it was, it was promoted the way they normally do. The thing is, is that it's it's turned it's turned to garbage. Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, like, I'm. Not only did he tell me that, and I didn't know. It. Once he told me, I really wasn't interested anyway. You know what I mean? I'm like, <laughs> maybe it's my era, man. You know what I mean? They don't even play. Yeah, yeah. Not even, not even just the festivities before that, man. Uh, the, the NBA dunk contest, man. Remember when the dunk contest would be something you ran home? Highlight. Oh, yes, the yes. Yeah. You know, highlight of the whole weekend, man. It's like, yeah. yeah. You can tell me that it wasn't. So let me ask y'all a question. Did, for those of you that watched it. You know, I'm speaking to the brothers here. You know what I mean? What was your thoughts on that? Particularly, the dunk contest was trash. The dunk whole contest. thing was trash, can, man. Can you, Lane LeBron James. It's all LeBron for. Just for the context of this, you know, because again, a person like myself who did not watch it, I did not, you know, yeah. I didn't watch I'm it. I'm about to say, I'm chiming out too because I didn't watch it either. I yeah, didn't know yeah. it was on. And I'm quite sure a few people out, you know, in the audience probably didn't watch it. Give us some context on who was actually in the dunk contest, if you can, please. I can't even remember. It was some, <laughs> some kid. Some kid from the G League and uh, the yeah, rest little, of it little, little white guy, little, little white, white guy who won who won last year. Little yeah. white guy, <laughs> yeah, little the, white guy. Then them, then them sad, hey, them sad Philadelphia 76ers uh, gave him a contract just so he could win a dunk, <laughs> dunk contest last year. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he represent Philly last year? When he last he was, year he did. He he was did. In the six, they gave him like a week contract or something like that just to yeah. uh, get in the dunk contest. Yeah, it was uh, a yeah, because Matt, they, they, Matt probably, they probably knew the kid could dunk or whatever. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They wanted to try to put him on, but he ain't never playing the games. And then when he did play, it was like garbage time. Oh, really? Yeah, sad, wow, man. Wow, yeah. wow. Like, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this because this, this was a quote that I heard. Mm-hmm. They said this kid jumped over Shaq, so that's kind of impressive. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you jump over Shaq, and yeah. the, the kid Jalen Brown from the uh, from the Celtics jumped over some little blogger who like five two, sitting in a chair. Yeah. So it's like like what are, what are we watching here? The sad part about it is, man, I remember like growing up, the dunking contest was exciting until sad to say until LeBron got in the league. Mm. All the greats did the dunk contest, even Kobe. Yeah, Kobe won the dunk contest with, with with nice dunks. Yeah, and if and again, I always say, man, the people can say what they want. I I don't think he really competes, man. I, I I think he plays the game, but I don't think he's really competing. He's really putting it on the line. You know what I mean? Like how, how the greats want everything. Yes. Mike won the dunk. He wants the dunking contest. You know, some of the some of the greats. Couldn't even shoot and gotten three point contests. You know what I mean? They the, want it the, all. The, the greats want to beat you in flipping quarters. Yeah, <laughs> what it is? They want to win. They want to win. pennies, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then uh, not that, LeBron. If, if if he if he ain't got a stack stack team, he don't want to play. He don't want to play, man. It's sad. Man. It's and then sad. uh, with Adam Silver, man, and all of this stuff that they're doing to make the game exciting. The what is it? The the end the free, season free championship. Flow. Uh, adding on another, what is it? The, uh, the adding on another playoff game and all this other stupid. Guard. You know how you make it exciting? Play defense. There you go. Bring defense back. You know what I mean? Stop this. Uh, you know this uh big three garbage, and you know just play defense. Now, and the game will the game will go back to what it is. You know what I mean? Make 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 people actually have to earn a check. Stop calling these these ticky tack technical fouls. 
let's let's get back to where technicals are real technical. You know right. what I mean? And, and and we go on. We have some good competition. Yeah, it ain't like this is football or nothing like that. It ain't like you're gonna get like you know a uh, concussion for getting a hard foul or something like that. Not you know I mean occasionally I guess, but not you know every foul down. The field yeah, you not you you're not getting a real concussion. You're not getting a football concussion. Yeah, you 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 might just get bopped in the head and your head might hurt a little bit. But come on, man, you gotta stop. I blame LeBron. LeBron don't want to compete. He don't he, he don't want to compete in a dunk contest. If you're the best player in the league, supposedly. Why wouldn't you? And you can jump. Why wouldn't you want to go out there and dunk and 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 do it for the fans? Yeah, yeah, and make All Star uh, All Star Week what it is. It's kind of like a fan appreciation thing, man. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Like you make a you make a lot of money. I also I heard mean? that when they was presented the trophy at the end, not for the dunk contest, but for the actual game, it was really like no fanfare to it. Like it was just like here's the trophy. You know what I mean? Yeah, scoring two hundred points in one game, yeah, kind of stupid on. garbage. Yeah, like that, man. That's, that's, really, yeah. that's ridiculous. That's no ridiculous. defense being being played, man. It's ridiculous, man. Niggas is just they 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 just coming down and just pulling from half court. Like, what are we doing here? Is we playing? If we was in the park right now mm-hmm. and somebody shot from half court, you'd be like, "Yo, get off the get off the court." <laughs> right, get out of here, man. <laughs> but see, that was we speaking in our generation of playing though, man. These kids is like that though. Dang, well, that's I think I, I think I think that's one of the things that uh messed this whole thing up, man. Them doggone participation trophies. That's yeah. why everybody yeah. happy when they lose and yeah, yeah they not playing. Everybody though. hugging, you know, when they when they not. It's, it's like nobody's really having a competition anymore. It's like all right, so what? We lost. Let's you know get back mean? to let, let's get back to. If I lose, I don't want to shake your hand. Let's get <laughs> back to that. At least for yeah. today. Yeah. You know what I mean? At least for the day, we can get over, we can get over it later down. The hey, line. if if if, if we right. play five times over the next five years and you beat me five times, I don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, competition is that's man. What competition yeah. is. Right, but we not hey. friends. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it just like the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl. Pro, Pro Bowl is not what it used to be no more. Now it's flag football. It's flag, it's flag football. football. Flag, yeah. flag football, man. Nobody wants to yeah. compete. You know what it is? Because there's a lot of YouTubers going around. I forget this guy's name. Oh, his name is Destroy, I think. Mm. The young boy out of Florida. He's a kicker. My my boys watch him all the time. Mm-hmm. But he go around. And y'all probably seen him in commercials and stuff. Because now he's got some type of connection with the NFL. But him and another guy go around all these big cities and have all these young boys that meet up at a football stadium oh, and yeah. have all them running routes. Yeah, mm-hmm. man, I like that, man. I and like they had that. the DBs. Hey, it's very entertaining. Yeah, 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 I like that. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking yeah. about. They had, uh, they had, uh, I want to say they had Ocho Cinco out there. No, no, Terrell Lowens out there one time, man. He was out yeah, there. They had, they, yeah, they had the last one I saw. They was in Philly. They had Michael Vick out there quarterbacking, throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. yeah. And those kids out there playing aggressive, man, having some fun, Dude. man. Dude, I'm telling you, you see all type of dudes out there running. Old dudes think they still got it. You got yeah. white boys trying to prove that they 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 rough. And they some of them, right. yeah, some of them are nice too, man. That's so yeah. there. And that, that's, that, that's, it, that's the thing. Sports competition in sports has always been fun. Yeah. And if yeah. you can't find the fun and wanting to win in an athletic competition, you shouldn't be out there. Yeah. Right. Right, right. about that, right. man. Yeah. And yeah. then and then you're calling these guys, you know, the greatest. And really, they don't really want to compete. I don't think LeBron really wants to compete. I I mean, I like LeBron as a person. You you can't take nothing from him as far as business is concerned. And for the philanthropy. For him being standing up for a lot of uh, social issues and stuff like that. But on the court, man, he's nothing compared to some of the other guys, man. We're talking about killers in the past, man. Like Mike, Kobe. Kobe. So, hey, but, but he's old. Yeah. But he's old too, though. He's one of the older players out there, LeBron. You know what, though, I I think the reason why that is is because you know they like to compare him to Mike and Kobe and them guys. But Mike and Kobe and it was double team and triple team the entire career. He since mm-hmm. his since his first four or five years in Cleveland, he could he ain't had no double true. He hasn't had the stress on his body that they've had for those for those years. You know what I mean? And not to mention they're not playing basketball like they were back then. They're not he's not even getting a hard foul. You know what right. I mean? All the you, you have go, rarely go, go seen somebody knock him out the air or put him put LeBron on his back. Yeah. 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 yeah but you, but you, you touch gotta, LeBron, you might get kicked out the league. <laughs> that's true. Fair. That's true. 
That's true. But you got to realize, too, a lot of these dudes are flopping like crazy. It gets sickening sometimes. It's when sickening, they, yeah. they, you know, I mean, to the point that they got YouTube clips now showing where it's just so outrageous of the, of, of the flops that they be doing. Mm-hmm. But he's the you king. He's, he was the king flopper, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. LeBron yeah, was. Yeah, he did. LeBron was the king flopper. And, then I, and I look at, like, these kids now when they actually play ball, if you go to the court, a lot of them are just doing it. You know what I mean? Just flopping just to, to do it. You know what I mean? It's like right. it's like a part of their game now. You know what I mean? And then, right. and then, and then got, people have the nerve to say now that, you know, the basketball players now are more talented than uh, those in the past. Let me tell you yeah. something. The problem with basketball right now, everybody wants to be a three or a two. You know what I mean? They wants to be a, a shooting guard or they want to be a small forward. I don't care if you seven five or five one. Everybody plays plays the two or the three position. It's and, the it's that the European style basketball, positionless basketball. Yeah, that's not that's not hooping. I mean, like you seven foot, you're not gonna play point guard. You are gonna play center or, or power forward. Get down there in the box. Get your money. Yeah, get yeah. your money. That's what it is. I remember as a kid, you know, as soon as you went out on the, on the court. Coach just told you right here, yeah, right, right big man, back. all big men go down here, point yeah, guards go over here, mm-hmm. you know, so on and so forth. And this is the problem. They say everybody is more skilled. Skilled in what? Being a, a two or a three? What about learning about the drop step, you know, and uh, all the different moves and different things that you got to do under under the backboard and stuff like that? Nobody really is. I guess I think Joel Embiid is probably the only one that actually still somewhat have that kind of big man game. You know what I mean? I don't know too many players that have that. Uh, big... the, the the Joker, the Joker got a big man game. He just European. I, I ain't gonna lie. He got the moves. He just slow and can't jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Joker's one of them. Joker's one. He got of some them. footwork. Yeah, he, he's not bad at all. Joker, yeah, then, but 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 then again, he also too is the one that bring it down. You know what I mean? So he's not. I mean, he he got he, he got the traditional moves when he wanted, but he got he, he bring another another. So that's, that, that, that's that's another thing. Why the point guards or, or, the, or the guards don't, don't go take the ball from these big men dribbling the ball? I, I, that's what another thing I said, man. Again, because there's no defense being played. How in the world you got a 7'5", man, coming down, dribbling and crossovering you, and you 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 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, six, there's no way that should happen yeah, if you're playing go, defense. Go take the ball from him. Go take the ball from him, man. But, uh, you know, the Adam Silver should be fired, man. He's really messing up the sport. That whole big three garbage is really – Killing the league, you know what I mean, and uh, and we got and the sad part about it, there's some good talent in the NBA now. Then you got the John Morant, uh, you got the uh, the kid down there. Um, what is it? Uh, Anthony, the kid, the kid, the kid Wimby is nice. You got Anthony Wimby. Edwards from Minnesota. Anthony Edwards, yeah, that's what I'm gonna yeah. say. Edwards, yeah, you got some nice talent out there, man. A lot of nice talent, man. And he playing around. Yeah, speaking of John Morant, John Morant said next year he's gonna do it. Oh, that's the dumb concept. You should save it. Well, he's yeah. doing it now. Yeah. What that's I do right. like about the uh, what I do like about these young kids now, they're not playing around with LeBron and them, man. You know what I mean? They're coming out and trying to compete, man, trying to take their and, heads off. And that's the reason why I say LeBron will never be better than Mike, because people feared Mike. Mm-hmm. Nobody fears LeBron. Yeah. Like they go and try to dunk on him. Uh, anytime they get, they go, they 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 go try to, you know, do things to him. He, he ain't never do that to Mike. They feared Kobe too, man. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe was feared. The Mamba was feared, man. Absolutely, <laughs> the Mamba was definitely feared, man. But uh, yeah, Adam Silver, they need to get him out of here, man. He's killing the league, man. The sad part about it's like only really one sport now that you can watch and get some competition out of it. Now I think that's football. And the sad well, part about that, and they're trying to mess that up too. Let me. Uh, I, I think the only the only sport you can watch and really see competition is boxing or UFC. Yeah. Is this football? Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you. Else. I mean, I go, I'm not going to spend too much time on the football thing, but I want to ask y'all, man, because we did, we weren't together when the Super Bowl came and went. You know what I mean? And mm. we all see how that turned out. But I, I got to say, I predicted that like two weeks prior to that Taylor Swift was going to win that Super Bowl. But um, what happens? Tra- is, Travis Kelsey, big pharmaceutical. You know what? Yeah, going you know on. what's going on, brother. <laughs> They don't even talk about the brother that actually scored the touchdown. You ever notice that? Nobody speaks about uh, it. You know what I mean? Right, but, right. It's a big, big farmer. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll save that for another affair. But what happens is I noticed in one of the commercials they're talking about now that the um, NFL is about to go international, start recruiting uh, people from over overseas, man, with a heavy uh, focus in a commercial on Africa. You know what I mean? 
So what what do y'all think about that? Do you think that's a good idea, or is it going to turn into a uh, I think basketball I, at some point? I think that's what's happened. Well, I think it happened in uh, it happened in baseball. It happened in uh, it's happening in in uh, basketball now. And the crazy thing about it is, it's kind of eliminating black players. Yep. You know because baseball they did it, and now you can't find no blacks in baseball. And then right now you're seeing how uh, the Europeans are taking over the NBA. And, and that's the thing, right? So I don't mind. Europeans, if you can Europe, play, you can play. The, the Europeans and the Africans, but this is the thing, right? So you got you got the, the Africans and the overseas players actually being trained in the, in the skill of playing basketball and the, the science of the game, where you have the American players, they just basically playing pickleball so they get to college or get to the pros. Yeah, like they, you don't you don't really have an understanding of the game. And then so over there it, it's basically putting them behind. And then also, too, over there, even though the, it's a Euro game, that Euro game is aggressive. You know what I mean? Over here, we still playing patty cake now. You know, everybody's yeah. all soft and everything like that. It, it's, it's, it, it might nix us out of it. You know, we, we laugh it, at it. It probably, it probably will. It probably will. You know, and people will sit, sit here and listen to it and they'll say, oh, no, well, black people will never be out of basketball or whatever like that. But look at baseball. Yeah, it's like probably I think somebody said one time it's like one percent of baseball is African American. I remember one time or another Reggie Jackson and all of these names was in baseball. You know what I mean? Reggie Jackson wasn't black though. Yeah, yeah, I found out yeah later on, but I'm, I'm that's why I found out he was uh what did he say Puerto Rican or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. but well, excuse me, not Reggie Jackson. Let's say Daryl <laughs> Strawberry and Dwight Gooden, the Koch brothers, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now I, I remember a couple of years ago the Phillies was in the uh, World Series and they ain't had no black players. It was lot, just crazy. Like a lot, a lot of teams don't have black players in baseball. You know what I mean? And what where you get fooled that is you think is because uh, they're taking them. Hispa- they're, they're Spanish, but they'll be Dominican and you know mm-hmm. brown skin, but they they're not really you know African American or people of color, but they're people, not. They're not you know they're not. Us, I guess you would say, but yeah, that's yeah. what's going on, and that Euro game is actually fitting to to them. Remember, we hated the Euro game. I yeah. still do. Remember, we hated the Euro game. We wanted this aggressive basketball that we had, you know, with birds and magics and stuff like that. And then the Euro game came in. Everybody talked bad about it, but now that's what it is. Yeah, but the thing is, for me, like watching the basketball eighties, nineties, even early two thousands, you had to have heart. You know what I'm saying? And and yeah. now, like, you can't do nothing. You can't touch nobody. You can just run down a court, do whatever you want. And it's like ev- everybody's talking trash. It's like you're not even built like that. You wouldn't do that if I could punch you in your face. <laughs> Seriously. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Because now, now they're throwing you, and, and throwing you out off the teams and stuff and suspending you for long periods of time now for fighting. Back in the day, they didn't. They weren't that harsh with you fighting. I mean, you would fight, and then you may sit out the rest of the game, but you can't wrap back. But now, it's yeah. like with anything in life, people don't want to be punished no more for for the actions. Yeah, right yeah. about that. Yeah. All right, so check this out. We're gonna move on to the next thing, which is I know near and dear to your heart, Trey. <laughs> Fanny, Fanny Willis, Fanny, Fanny. I realized I've been pronouncing this woman's name wrong. Or oh, Fanny. Willis. That's what a dad. That's what a dad said. Yeah, yeah. Fine, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so listen. Um, of course, we know that she's on trial to be removed. You know, from Trump's case, if I'm using that term correctly. So, right. you know, I don't want to get into too much context because everybody knows what's going on. But apparently, you know, she hired someone that she allegedly was seeing during the time and it was things that was going on where they spent a lot of money and the blah, blah, blah. You guys can go to any news site USA and watch this, but she's saying she overpaid him. Overpaid. Yeah. And then she took it and then took advantage of the overpay. Yeah. You know, yeah. By going but on the, trips and but, stuff. But like the that. real story really is how Fanny is a funny, excuse me, is um, handling herself in this courtroom. man. <laughs> you know? I, th- I think she did a bad job. You think so? Yeah. She Thanks, went there. Yeah, she went there with that. Uh, don't get me wrong, man. I think what she don't really have a case against her, but I think at the end of this, they are going to put a case against her because she was doing things in the court. Like I think uh, she's trying to say she keeps so many thousands of dollars in her in her home, which mm-hmm. are 
father told her to do or whatever the case may be. And then at one point, I think they said she had a tax lien for like a couple of thousand or something like that. And they were kind of asking her, well, you know, you got all this money in your house. Why didn't you pay the tax lien? And they was like, you know, are you going to tell me how to pay my bills? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's what the real you know story mean? is like a lot of the responses to these you know, and Again, it might make it through this case. But there's a tax person somewhere watching this, like, whoa, you you talking kind of slick, you know what I mean? And then the, the, the thing is, when you when, when you in those political areas, and especially if you're a lawyer, you have a, a, a higher knowledge of certain things. So when you get in those type of situations or they put you in those type of situations, they tend to be more sarcastic because again, they know something allegedly that the uh, the public doesn't know. Right, right. I think I think though she being I I maybe I looked at the case, right? And I'm thinking maybe she just was so angry. That's the way she approached it. That the fact that they're coming at her like this. Wait, 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 no, wait, wait. We got to stop it right there. You don't want to paint her as the uh, angry black woman. Oh, everybody already did that. <laughs> so you don't every that. every news outlet <laughs> that's is saying like, that. Yeah, that's, that's the whole thing. It's like how different outlets are reporting it differently. You know what I mean? So see, but, uh, see, but, but that's the problem right there. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, if they call her angry black woman, so. I mean, why we keep running from folks that, that say things like that? Okay, she an angry black woman. So what? Is she right or wrong? That's the bottom line. Let her be right. an angry black woman. She human. She yeah. Is. I, and and I, why 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 is it that only black people get painted as angry when when white people do it or Caucasian people or whatever they get on TV and they express a certain amount of emotion? You they never exactly. be painted as an angry white boy or angry. Exactly. Um, you know, it's a dangerous game to play though, man, in that courtroom, man, because. Don't, even though she's not on trial right now, but after this, if you watch that that case, I'm quite sure they're gonna bring up a case against her because it was a lot of fugazi re- responses in that case, man, about that money, man. And I, I'm not saying that she did anything wrong; it just didn't seem right. I'm not, and I understand. I'm an objective. I ain't riding against. Them. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I watched yeah. it, and I'm looking at a case, and I'm like, you know, you know, we as black people, we could look at a case and tell if it's going right or wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we'll see. That's how I felt, man. I don't see the problem. So what? Is she dating this this guy? What they got to do with the case? They don't affect the case. Well, what they're saying is that in the case is that they're trying to say that she actually is kind of giving him the money and contracts, and he's been paid like crazy better than everybody else you but he's not I mean? like he, supposed to be not qualified enough to take this case on and they're saying he's getting a whole lot more money than they think he should get and the sad part about it is is that they're trying to say that they've been on these trips and different dates and whatever whatever and they're trying to say so that what so what that that money. Money. so what the folks been doing that for the for the longest that ain't nothing new i, I, I agree i agree with you pope it's the fact that they they want to they want to hold us to a different standard. And I, I said this in other shows. They always trying to hold black people to a different standard. Now you got all all these Fortune 500 company CEOs who are being paid for who knows what way more than they should. Who are taking trips and all that type of stuff that never brought up with no charges. Matter of fact, when they do something wrong, they get a they get a a, a, a stimulus package, a surplus, a buyout to make sure that their companies don't fail. But you're trying to yeah. hold us to a different. Uh, a different standard. A different standard. I agree with y'all, sure. brothers. I agree with y'all, brothers. But this is America. Yeah, it's gonna be different. But, I don't make but, it right. But, but again, I'm not saying it is right. But but again, but again, we are so easy to let other folks think for us. You know what I'm saying? We, we, and and then and then we all follow along with that train of, of thinking. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's like it's like for instance when COVID first came out, right? And people don't even think about or even talk about this no more. When COVID first came out, the lie went out that black people can't catch it. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Mm-hmm. It was so popular, it made it to one of the skits on Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 right. All right, so why was that lie spread so far, so many different places? And if, if we actually believe that, we're going to walk around with no masks, and guess what's going to happen? We're going to catch COVID and possibly die. Right, right. So those in the beginning, they knew that that wasn't true, but we they told a lie and we took it and kept it going and and, and act on it as if it was factual. And actually, a lot of our people die more of it because we have more underlying conditions, probably than most people. 
You know what I mean? And then that, actually, actually and a lot of black, the fact that they thought they couldn't get it. Yeah. A lot of black people did take take that too hard. I remember watching friends in video of some of my friends in Brooklyn having a great time during this time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Early stages. Right. You know what I mean? Then maybe about a month later, everybody masked up and you know, taking this serious. But yeah, you're right about you're that. talking about a trap. That's a trap right there. The trap house. That's what a trap house moves right there. They trapped us. <laughs> yeah. But we again, in the uh, trap. But again, I, like I said, I agree with everything y'all say, right? But I'm always like this. Like, let's say, for instance, I do nothing wrong wrong today. I get pulled over in the street, pulled over in, as I'm driving to work or whatever the case may be. And some trumped up charges come up to me or whatever the case may be. I still can't go in that courtroom and that crazy. Oh, you no. Know I mean? Oh, no. You got to be wise. So, you know, again, I, I, I hear what you say. I would definitely have the right to be angry. But the reality of it all is you're still in America, man. And, and you, we, you, we, would love, we would love to say, you know, maybe justice is blind and everything went right. But it doesn't go that way, man. You know you're mean? also not a lawyer. I, I believe if you was a lawyer and, and had that title of nobility, that when you went in that courtroom, if they brought you up on something, that you would also be sarcastic, highly sarcastic, because you know the the situation that you're in is a complete farce. Then again, uh, again, uh, y'all got to listen to that case, man, because as I'm listening to that case, that that case honestly sounds uh, fugazi. Like it sounds like a little weird with the because I think even there's a portion in there where like I think the brother plead the fifth on a couple of things that he initially. Um, kind of talked on and then he plead the fifth later on in the conversation you know what i mean so i don't know i i i, I would be i'm thinking somewhere down the line they're going to open up some cases down the line to find out and get a little bit deeper into that whole situation but again i don't know if she did anything wrong i'm just saying from looking from outside i'll be honest i'm gonna tell you something crazy and this going off on it her father came in there and destroyed the courtroom my father was a beast he was, yeah, he was. I heard he's an attorney too. Yeah, he's an attorney. He was very professional. He greeted all the people as counselor as they were talking to him. You know, and, I mean, he wasn't cooning and buffooning or nothing like that, but he just did mm-hmm. what he had to do the professional way and got up out of it. And I thought it was real classy how he handled it. You know, so that's my opinion on it. But uh, I think she probably should have took the same approach as her dad. She should have said none of your business and, and kept it moving. And some Honestly way, speaking, some, some well, going back to that, yeah, she, she had the right to do that. Yeah, yeah. She didn't even she have to. Have. She didn't even have to show up to court. From what I yeah. understand, yeah. She I said. She said when it, when the testimony was, when, you know, it was her time to get up. She said she she chose she ran to the court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she was like, she was waiting. She said she was in the office pacing, waiting for them to call her, call her down. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, what, she well, she had different for first time right? in and first time in, in history of America that a black yeah. person was going to yeah. court and, and ran to get on the stand. <laughs> Fanny, Fanny been getting that money too long, man. She been getting that money too long, man. You know what I mean? Ain't no brother, ain't no brother volunteering to get on no stand for nothing, man. <laughs> she has been getting that money too long, man. All right, so let me let me run down a couple of um, moments from Fanny, Fanny, not Fanny, Fanny. Well, it's uh, no, time. It. No, it's Fanny. Name is Fanny, man. They're trying to get cute. <laughs> a testimony. Both from the South. You know how I work out there. <laughs> I mean, she, she, she is kind of fine, though, so Fanny yeah. kind of work. Yeah. So, call you, you know, they they they, they named you Sadie. You ain't going to change yeah. your name to Sade. Sade and all that Sadie stuff like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, so uh, all right, here's one of, one of her moments here. Check this out. October 2019, well, judges' conference. He hasn't gotten to the point where Miss Willis should be treated also in this situation. I think we well, have. I very much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. I very much want to be not here. Not so much that you're hostile, Miss Willis. It'd be an adverse witness. Your interests are opposed to Miss Merchants. Thank Ms. you. Miss Merchants' interests are, per- are contradictory. Contrary to democracy, Your Honor, not to mine. A Fulton County district attorney in charge of criminally prosecuting former President Donald Trump for interference in the 2020 election shockingly took the stand during a hearing in the case. Bonnie Willis had sought to avoid testifying about the allegation she was in a romantic relationship with the special prosecutor she assigned to the Trump case. But in an about face, she stormed into the courtroom and she insisted that she testify. Please give me the time period. <laughs> Mr. Wade visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here, 
I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Ms. Willis. You see. Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. The Fulton County District mm-hmm. Attorney made headlines when she brought RICO charges against the former president and more than a dozen of his campaign staff. In an extraordinary moment, Willis marched into the Atlanta courtroom while attorneys were arguing over whether she should be forced to testify. As she approached the prosecutor's table in court, she looked before the judge, and as the entire gallery watched, she uttered four simple words, I'm ready to go. Yeah, Boy, who says that? Yeah, she was ready. She was ready who for real. That? She ain't gonna say that and not be ready. I'm ready to go. And he's doing yeah. too much. I ain't doing too much playing with these boys, man. Yeah, hey, but she flipped it back on them. You saw how she flipped it back on. She had paperwork to show them where they was lying at. But now all of a sudden they, they don't want they want to shit stuff down. See, and that's mm-hmm. why you had to do that enemy like that. You got to put him on on trial at the same time while he's questioning you. And, and, think, and they, go ahead. I think she was. I think she was right in that situation because if somebody assumes something in your personal life, then I think you can take that. You know, you can take that approach to it. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. you, just, you don't want to. Really, what they're doing is, you know, this is Trump right here. They're playing dirty pool. You know what I mean? It's like, this might not even have anything to do with his case, but what he's doing is like, I'm going down, I'm going to take the whole ship down with me. I'm doing everything. I'm going to. Well, actually, it has a lot to do with his case because what happens is, is that if she pursues this, and this is, you know, the Fulton County thing with him with the uh, votes. So, what happens is, is that if they get her off, the next person that comes in to take that case could be like, all right, I'm dropping all the charges. You know what I mean? Well, when I say that, I mean like I know that it's a, you know, it's connected. But I'm saying I don't really think they're going to stop her, or I don't think it's going to affect the outcome of his case in the long run. You know what I mean? Because whatever the evidence is, is the evidence. You know what I mean? Whether she presented or somebody else presented, it's going to be the same thing. No, so would, it be would, as passionate, would it be as passionate as she? Because she's passionate about getting this done. Well. Yeah, well, I guess maybe um, you could look at it like that. I mean, maybe that might be the case. But well, would they even pursue it? They like, like Mike was saying, they might just go ahead and drop it. They might drop it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. might. Yeah, yeah. nah. They can... Because history showed us that they can pay people off, mm-hmm. and then we only never hear nothing about never it. Never hear nothing about it. We'll see, man. But uh, again, you know, Fanny, uh, <laughs> Fanny went went ten toes down, man. Yeah. Fanny, you know I mean? Fanny. Fanny. Hey, listen, man, I'm called a fanny. Mama yeah. name a fanny, I'm called a fanny. <laughs> Mama might name a fanny, so I don't know. <laughs> hey, no, they, down, they from down south, man. Ain't nobody calling nobody. You ever met somebody named Fanny down south? Never. 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 <laughs> Always fanny. Always fanny. I know a fanny. Yeah, I know a couple of fannies. Come on, man. Yeah. You better stop that, man. That don't make no sense. All I will tell you this about fanny, man. She does take a nice vacation every now and then. Oh, man. Now. Yeah, she goes in. She goes Fanny, in. Good. Yeah. yeah, Fanny. Fanny says she took the guy out for his fiftieth birthday and uh, took him to I think Belize. What did it? Was well, it? Matter of fact, I, I think he came off a trip with the mom uh, on a cruise, and I think they went to a, I think they went to another trip. And I think she said for his fiftieth birthday, she took him paid it, paid for everything. Well, uh, and her reasoning is my fiftieth birthday sucked, so I'm going to make sure yeah. he has a good time. I like that. Where's she at? Come on, Fanny. I'm, 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 I'm trying to see what a problem is. What a problem is. As I've stayed on this microphone. We, we, we all should be so so blessed to find a fan. You know? Several <laughs> times I've expressed on this microphone, I can't find somebody to make me a sandwich <laughs> on my 49th and a half birthday. Not that I am 49 and a half. Hey, you got the wrong women. You're messing with the wrong people. <laughs> this is facts. This is facts. Fanny hey, stock, <laughs> Fanny stock, stock about to go up, man. It's gonna be a bunch of creeps in the DM after this one, right here, man. Mm-hmm. Fanny stock about to go way up in there, man. Fanny, when she got, well, I think when she got to wherever they went, she gave him twenty five hundred dollars. Mm. Nobody knows for twenty five hundred dollars in money. Little, little, little pocket money. Hold on. Yeah. Little something. She, little something. Are, she are she already paid for the trip. She gave him twenty five hundred dollars, and then she gave I think the tab, cab driver like about three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. Like that. Make sure yeah. you keep the cab rolling. Mm. <laughs> keep king. the cab rolling while we down here. <laughs> and 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 sitting in court like a kingpin. Just got her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I applaud that one. <laughs> oh man, I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I wasn't a fan of her. 
I'm starting to like her. <laughs> you gonna overlook the Rico cases down there? Down there, down there. Hey, I'm, I'm starting to like her. Yeah, <laughs> sitting in the court, oh, kingpin, and I'm like, what is this about? Where we actually complain about a lot of a lot of these women nowadays don't want to be wives and don't want to be mothers. Fanny look like she know how to treat a brother. I know, but then family also said she's your equal or something like that. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that's the problem she was having with the brother. That, uh, she what, they, what they say about her? She was saying that the problem that she was having with the uh, the guy that she was seeing is that she was constantly saying like she's his equal, and you know, a man can't really take care of her, all that kind of crazy stuff like that, man. You know, oh, oh so she's crazy. crazy. He had a father, and, and she talking like that with a father. My, my question is, what type of upbringing did she have? Yeah, well, her dad crazy. actually, dad hey, was hey, a hey, sketchy character like, too. Man. Like the comedian TK, uh, TK said, "Who raised you?" <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you know, her dad was a, a, a well, he was affiliated. Technically, I guess he was a back Black Panther, but you know. Uh, he was down with Ron Karinga and them. Anybody know anything about yeah, Ron Karinga? You know Ron, Ron Karinga was a little little sketchy. <laughs> what do you mean sketchy? Street dude? Yeah. Uh, well, a lot of Black Panthers believe that Ron Karinga uh, kind of had something to do with, you know, snitching on people and stuff like that. It's alleged. It's alleged. Oh. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And uh, wow. his, fa- his father and her father and Ron Karinga, I think at one time or another, had a newspaper together or something like that. Like, they ran a newspaper and stuff like that. So, mm. my father's name I don't think was ever in any any, any mud, but you know Ron Karinga <laughs> is your man. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, yeah, man, yeah. Man. But, like, but anytime somebody come in from a household full of thinkers, you know, because because uh, they try to put all black folks in, in one box, but we not we come in all kind of boxes, and 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 we got some uh, heck of a thinkers in the, you know in our circles, mm. and so. If she came from that type of environment, so apparently she did, you know, being an attorney and stuff and being what you're saying about her father, mm. you would think she would know better. But again, society got got the lines all screwed up and all gray that, you know, that's that's right. We call him bad. And if what's bad, we call him right. Right. You know, right. Right. instead of getting back to the basic, you know, the basic stuff, they're like women and, and cooking. Society been telling them for so long, or oh, you, you're a weak woman if you cook for your man. But the, just the opposite is, is the truth. A man really would love and respect you more if you knew how to cook. Right. You're right about that. You know, back I, in the day, back in the day, you call a woman a <laughs> that, that's a problem. And you call mm-hmm. one now, it's a it's a badge of honor. Yeah, Come right. on, man. Right. Come on. Come and, on. They're making food out of us, man. And we and we just when we letting them. And I think again, I, I don't think that um, you know, when it comes to men and women, it's like now, like you just said, like women look down on the position of cooking and cleaning and all the other stuff like that. Like it's a weakness, but you don't realize the power that you have, you know, by cooking and cleaning and doing those things, man. You know, like I say all the time in regards to my mom, you know what I mean? Her cooking and cleaning and stuff like that. My mom can make a phone call to family or somebody and get somebody hurt. <laughs> you, know I mean? yeah. you know, her power just from helping people and yeah. Doing things, man. She has she has a power, man. You know what I mean? So yeah. people look down on that power, you know what I mean? And it's it's ridiculous, hey, man. These women tell me they got a problem with their husband coming home. Cook that nigga some food, watch you be home early. Right. And, and be know how to cook. And shut up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that too. And, and shut that up. Too. Sometimes, sometimes, man. You don't have to, you know, run your mouth all the time, man. I don't want to talk negative and crazy, but you know what I mean? That's what it nah, is. No, we 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 gonna be honest, man. He wanted that brother to come home, cook that man a meal, let the house be clean, and, and shut him, up when he get there. I say more so give, just give him peace. Yeah. Give Instead him of peace. Shut up. Give him hey, some peace. Hey, peace. I bring all the men home in them situations. You ain't got to ask me. <laughs> I, I, hey, I get a second job. I, you know what? I got a good woman. Yeah. Yeah, I get a second, third job. <laughs> just hey, some hey, peace. Hey, just peace. Back to basic, man. We, we, we've gotten away from the basic stuff, bro. Yeah, you're right about that. So, see what 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 it, what it is is that a lot of the women who were you know of age in the '80s and the '90s, they basically maybe they were single mothers and they had to do it themselves, right? So they raised their daughters to not want a man, therefore to be a man, and just think this whole independence thing is the way to go. And it's a it's a warped way of thinking. Right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
instead of just saying, baby, you know what? I messed up. I had a baby before I got married and stuff like that. Don't be like me. Your mama meant well, but I just got caught up. I want you to do better than me. Man, that yeah, make her look better as a mother. Yeah, that make her look better as a mother. Yeah. That's kind of true. That. But no, she wanna she wanna bring an excuse to kind of don't look at what I messed up at. You can do it by yourself, girl. Look at me. Mm-hmm. No, that, ain't, that ain't good. Yeah, well, you know, the feminist movement good. also had a big part to play in that too. So exactly. So exactly. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna move on to the final topic. But before we get into the final topic, let me ask y'all a question real quick. You know, since we're talking about Fani and this whole Trump thing, did your brothers buy a pair of those sneakers? <laughs> Trump. <laughs> I, I, I was I was joking earlier. As, 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 Trump, as Trump said, you know, you sneak heads. You sneak ahead. <laughs> so yeah, you, but you know what's funny about that? I, if I he was I, red, white, and blue, maybe not gold though. What you, you said, your mom? <laughs> hey, hey, he got a maybe. silver pair too. Now he got a silver pair out there. Yeah, that, I, I think I think for me that's gay. But listen, <laughs> gold shoes. It's a gold yeah. shoes. Gold shoes. Yeah. Gold. <laughs> Hey, now once back in the day, it would be a hundred percent gay, but nowadays they love them like it that. Now, yeah, it ain't gay no Man, more. Man, I'm, I'm, I, I still I, mean, I, I ain't wearing no gold sneakers. I, I, I still think, I think, um, what's them drawings they wear? Clogs? What, what, what are they? Crocs. Yeah, Crocs. Crocs. Oh, yeah, I, think, yeah, I, think, I think no man should be wearing. No them. man should be wearing Crocs. That's just me. <laughs> and Uggs. Girl shoes. And Uggs. Yeah, no man should wear Crocs and Uggs. No. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I had to put that out there because they said that a pair of his sneakers signed the other day at SneakerCon went for $9,000. Wow. And they actually $399 sneakers. But, you know, right. would you consider them? Any of your brothers changing your mind now? <laughs> no. Sneaker hats. 395 for a $9,000 markup? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll go get a pair of Jordans before I ever do that. I would never do that. Yeah, I would never pay for no Trump sneakers, man. I would never support yeah, them. I buy them and resell and make some money off it. <laughs> Which most people are doing that. Yeah, that's, I'm quite sure they yeah, do that. Yeah. yeah. I can't support oh, yeah. them, man. I couldn't support them in no way fashion. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, for me, it wouldn't even be about supporting them. It's like, these is ugly. I don't, I would never purchase oh, yeah, they're, them. They're ugly as sin, but, you know, people are actually going to buy them, man. Won't be no problem on this program, but somebody gonna buy it. You know what I mean? I didn't even, I didn't even know because when I watched it on the news the other day, they was making it seem like he had such a great time at sneaker con, and I thought it was like, like weird because it wasn't in Philly. Yeah, it was in Philly. Yeah. yeah. But here's the funny part: somebody told me later that they booed him there. Yeah, for selling the sneakers. Show, yeah. They didn't, they didn't show it. You know what I mean? Like his, I guess his press people, PR people, did the, the fugazi garbage and whatever, whatever, and they. From what I understand, they said they booed them and stuff like that. I don't know, dude. Don't the, dude, the, the media, the media is, is dirty, man. They, they they programming us, bro. <laughs> they, they show us what they want us to see. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's true. That's Speaking the of bottom that, line. are you are you brothers ready for November? What's going on in November? So the election. Election. The the election. Yeah. Now check this out. Yeah, this election. This is what I this is what I come up with. <laughs> this, this is what I come up with. When it comes to that presidential election, why vote? Be- because our vote don't matter. It's electoral college. That that's what counts, right? right? And listen, hey, Pope, I've been telling well, everybody already know my stance on this, man. You know, the I'm a proud non-voter, right? And mm-hmm. I never I never had a voter's registration card, man. Never had. Oh, really? You never yes. voted? Never voted. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I knew it a long time ago, man. I knew it a wow. long time ago, man. You know I, was, I, I, vote, I voted one time in 96. But Rock got you caught up? Oh. No, he said 96. No, 96. 96. 96. 96. Uh, That's like when he quick, just bro. got the voters oh, registration. Oh, man. You yeah. voted for Slick Willie? You voted for Slick Willie? You got you excited? At, at the time, I was just hyped to be voting. Like, yeah, yeah, he was, like, he was happy I'm, to be I'm voting. It was 96. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, never did man. it again. Yeah, I never voted, man. I never had a voters, voters registration card, nothing, man. I, I you know, I, I I heard that Malcolm X ballot of the bullet when I was a kid, man. It made so much sense to me. And ever since then, I never did it. And I, I I was understanding that electoral college thing back then, man. What he said? But he's just basically saying, like, you know, when it comes to voting, he was saying how uh, by giving you the right to vote, they take away the right for you to to revoke. You know, you have a hand in the process, but you really don't mm-hmm. have a hand in the process. You know because I mean? of the electoral college. So, but now, but they, the whole point is just to give you the thought process 
mm-hmm. that you are in it. You know what I mean? So when people say to you, yeah. that, you know, the world can be going, the United States can be going totally wrong for you. The president can be totally destructive. And then some, and this has been going on continuously for us as black people. And then people will always look at you and say, but did you vote? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My vote meant nothing anyway. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Especially if you know anything about the electoral college, it really doesn't matter. If you know, you know I mean? anything about this country, it doesn't matter. Like this country was set up right. in a political system, not not for us. We were, we, is- were, we were designed to be always be second class citizens in this country. Yeah, the fact that some little small town in West Bubble in the United States got the same electoral votes as uh, some major city where you know there's minorities and whatever. You know what I mean? It's it's total bullcrap, man. You know what I mean? Might be. So no- what, okay. Well, what about vo- voting local then? Local elections? You think that matters? Because there's no electoral college in local elections. It uh, it uh, it has a more of a of effect on your your everyday life. Exactly. Exactly. So that's where I vote. I vote on those, not the national the the national election. I don't vote in any of them because uh, again, I'm gonna tell you what I found out is that you know, especially coming from New York, man, it's like we have these people that come in the neighborhood who are supposedly these local politicians, and you know, they come there when it's time to get voted in. You don't ever see them again, man. True that. I never really see what they do in the community. I never see their hand in the community. So it really, I mean, people say, you know, I've heard brothers such as yourself, you guys say, you know, they vote in the local election because they feel like they got a, a better shot or hand in it. But in reality, I've never seen anybody in the local election do anything for any, anybody in my community. Well, yeah, I, you know what I, mean? well. I just don't see no hand in it ever. When, have you Have you noticed anything? <laughs> different to change the new community. I don't even put it like this. I've seen local politicians come through and then I never seen them again. And then even if you want to get deeper than that, you start talking about mirrors and stuff like that. That You know, I, like I always say, I remember watching David Dinkins in New York, run around in New York in the Kente cloth. Everybody got him in. I think he's the first black man in New York City. I mm-hmm. saw everybody feeling good. Uh, we ain't seen David Dinkins until like he was trying to get reelected the next joint, man. I remember in the Jamaicans and everything in in, in uh, Labor Day Fest was throwing bo- beers at his limousine. I was on Easter Park with when he was doing. Yeah, you know I mean, mm. they made him get out of there, man. Look, mm. I, I think I think I told this story before, but I'll tell it real quick. Um, my probably was like in first grade or something like that, and we was Wilson Good was running for mayor of Philadelphia. He's gonna be the first black mayor. And we was walking around with signs and all that, you know, elect Wilson Good or whatever. A, a few short years later, this nigga dropped a bomb on the move organization. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> was it Wilson so, Good? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was Frank. I thought yeah, it was yeah, Frank yeah. Rizzo's administration. Wasn't it Frank Rizzo? Yeah, yeah, that no, was no, no, no. It was Wilson huh? Good. It was Wilson Good? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I saw a documentary on move that said it was Frank Rizzo. I thought, I thought it was Frank yeah. Rizzo. No, yeah. not, not when the bomb came. It was Wilson Good. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow, man, mm. that's crazy. But you know what's funny? They pimped me out like that too, man, as a kid. I was in sixth grade. They took us down to uh, the uh to the synagogue on Eastern Parkway. And that's when Jesse Jesse, Jesse Jackson made that Jaime Town comment. And he just disrespected Jews and whatever like that. And then they <laughs> they forced them, they pimped them out and forced them to go to the synagogue. So my school, right? They took us all down there. We're sitting behind Jesse Jackson as he gave this speech in this. Uh pleading to the Jews about Jaime Town or whatever like that, man. You know what I mean? Also a classic Eddie Murphy sketch on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, Jaime Town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So I got pimped out too, man. They pimped yeah. us out. You know, they love to put some black kids behind a politician, man. That's it. That's make it. Them seem, make it seem like it's a good thing or whatever like that. And they know they don't get two cents about them black kids in the neighborhood. Man. Check check this out too, right? I, I, I come home at 08 and um, they was like, hey, you know, you can vote. I'm like, I can't vote. Like, you know, they, y'all stripped all that away from me. They like, no, this this new referendum, you can vote. Come on and vote. I'm like, nah, I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, that uh-huh. just don't sound right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so they try, like, try to set like, you up. <laughs> yeah, the, all, all, the, all the blackness in me is like, go vote for the brother. But my mind is like, yo, uh-uh, something ain't right. Uh, you know. Yeah, uh-huh. well, I'm gonna tell you, I, I voted for Barack, and my reason for voting for him was for the historical moment. 
of having the first black president. That's all. I, that was my only reason, only reason for voting for him. I didn't know his politics. I didn't know nothing. I only voted for him for that reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, if, if if I would have voted, I would have voted for Barack too, simply because he was black. Yeah, yeah, just, just because it, it, it's historical. It's historical, man. Yeah. That, forget about his political views, anything, man. He said just vote for him because your brother. I I I I felt the heart, <laughs> the need to. You want to get down with? It? I said, Nah, man, I can't do it, man. I know this is a shame. Vote. I always believed voting was a shame, man. I don't know, man. I think you believe uh, Santa Claus is white, too. <laughs> oh, I, did, man. I, did, I did it one time, man. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Y'all crazy, man. Hey, listen, let's go to this last topic, man, Santa Claus. Let's go to this last topic. Um, so we know that, I believe it was last year, right around this time, actually, that, you know, Malcolm X's family, along with uh, attorney Ben Crump, who, you know what, uh, I got to say this publicly, y'all. You know what I mean? I actually, on this show, several times, we all have given Ben Crump a really hard time. In the beginning. Right. right. In the beginning. All right? And, you know, we had a chance to go see the brother speak uh, about a week ago and everything like that. You know, he dropped a lot of jewels within that conversation. So... Yeah, and he good. gave my respect. Yeah. He gave my respect. And, you know, watching the documentary on Netflix prior to all of this, you know what I mean? And I've said this before, you know, it kind of changed my opinion on the brother. However, I mean, if he does something crazy, we'll keep... He can, he can get he, a he clip get anytime. Just like yeah. anybody else. Yeah. But Absolutely. for right now, Absolutely. but for right now, I will say, yes, I do have some respect for Ben Crump. I have a lot of respect. And we got to give him some credit. Yeah, I got to give credit, the reason, you know. The reason why we heard about it is the topic that we're going to discuss, and then we heard the Henrietta Lack thing, how he helped the family out. You know, and so yeah. some of the pharmaceutical companies. So we give him credit for that. And also by dropping that bomb about uh, John Hopkins saying that when he went back to do the investigations about the uh, Henrietta Lack situation, talked to the older cats in the neighborhood. They told him about how John Hopkins allegedly kidnapped black people at night and did experiments on them, which, you know, I'm yep. really doing my due diligence on it. And if we find some information, we definitely will be dropping it on this show because everybody is in that auditorium perked up when he said that. You know what I mean? But you you remember when we talked about uh, the thing that was going on at um, at Holmesburg and how the University of Penn was into that too, yeah. doing those experiments on those prisoners. Mm-hmm. So it's believable. Yeah, it's very believable. Oh, yeah. oh it's definitely, definitely yeah. believable. Very, very believable. Yeah, the history of America. Period. Oh yeah, man. We we've been getting guinea pigs for everything. You know what I mean? So yeah, very much. But, believable. Blacks and Jews are the guinea pigs of medical. Of science, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, definitely. definitely. People don't even understand. People, wait, wait. Who, who you say? Blacks and Jews? Blacks and Jews, man. Blacks. And no, Jews. Why, you put, why are you putting Jews yeah. in it? Because of the Holocaust. Because yeah, of, 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 yeah, of the Holocaust. Because of the Holocaust. No, no, no. Because in in the Holocaust, Hitler. A lot of stuff that we know about um, how hot you got to be in order for you to die, or your heart to give up, and how cold you got to be in order for you to die, whatever like that. A lot of that information comes from Hitler. Yeah. Right you know on. what's funny that, about that? That, that may be that may be true, but what about right now? Are they still working on Jews now? Like they working on us? Oh no! Oh, no. no. oh absolutely! No no no! Oh no 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 no! no, no, no. But <laughs> no, I'm saying, sir. but we can't de- we can't deny the fact that they actually went through it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, I mean they, they deny the fact that we went through it. They, they, well, uh, well, listen. That's a topic for another show, brothers. I mean, a, you know what I mean? Because if we keep going on and that, man, we're going to forget about what is happening right now, which is the fact that, you know, again, the family of Malcolm X with attorney Ben Crump um, was suing the CIA, the FBI, and the NYPD for $100 million for them, you know, accusing them of playing a role in Malcolm's death, right? Mm. So, as of today, Crump said that he has two new witnesses in that case. And so they had a press conference about that. And um, here's what's happening on this one, guys. It said the civil rights and personal injury attorney Ben Crump is scheduled to announce, which he did today, new witnesses and alleged conspiracy cases surrounding Malcolm X assassination. So he had a press conference, which we'll play a clip of, um, that says that his co-counsel, Ray Hamlin and Flint Tyler, Taylor, Taylor, will be introducing two new witnesses who have offered evidence in the case. The press release labels the witness as security associates who have never spoken publicly before and were arrested one week before the civil rights leaders was, was killed. 
So, um, of course, we know he was killed on February 21st, 1965. And he was only 39 years old at the time while speaking at the Audubon Ballroom where they had the press conference at. So um, what happens is is that they said that the NYPD, the FBI, and the CIA was listed as co-conspirators. However, the theories have been proven. So it's not even theory anymore. It's a fact. So him and his team said they secured more information and that they say will point the finger at the FBI for trying to cover up a conspiracy to murder Malcolm X. He also mentioned Crump, mentioned as uh, Eugene Roberts, a former NYPD informant who acted as Malcolm X associate, witnessed a dress rehearsal at the Audubon Ballroom for Malcolm's pending assassination a week prior to it. So it says, Roberts claimed that he heard someone say, the famous line that we all know, nigga, get your hand out my pocket at the dry run. And then he gave the information to the FBI but was unaware what they did with the information and still unclear who organized the dry run. So that's where we at with it right now. So that's where we at with it right now. I said he was, he was sketchy. It took him like 27 years to come out the closet and speak on what he spoke on. And he was dangerous. Gene Roberts was Gene Roberts, right? Uh, I don't know if that was the one that gave it up. Oh yeah, 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 gave, yeah. Gene Roberts, yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's the one that gave Malcolm, uh, gave Malcolm X mouth them off resuscitation, man. For all we know, what was he doing? Yeah, he could, he could, could have been blowing into his, uh, yeah. into his body. To, yeah, who, who knows? But we know that um, Jericho Hoover said it wouldn't be another Black Messiah, and he had a thing where he was trying to kill everybody. Oh yeah, we, 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 we found out recently that the FBI, CIA was behind the the murder of. Dr. King and Dr. King didn't die because he got shot. They gave him they gave him uh, a needle at the hospital. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we 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 are aware of this, and I I believe it. Yeah, um, a lot, well, a lot of people don't know is too with King is that um, that this is on record. You know what I mean? With the family, I think the family was able to sue the state after that. Mm-hmm. You know because of what King went through, mm-hmm. and um, even right now with this guy, which is crazy. This is what we're talking about right now in this day and age. Is that they need extra witnesses and all this other stuff like that. Gene Roberts was in there. We already know this. This has been put out there for years. Like he's been in the Audubon ballroom. He was a he was a part of a um, task force in New York City Police. I think it was called Boss or something like that. Mm-hmm. And what they did was is they were surveilling them. Like so, the fact that it took him twenty six years to come out and say that the man is dead now. I believe Gene Roberts. And uh, it took him 26 years to come out to even tell that. And he, he told us a long time ago what went on. Yeah, so why ago. are we, st- yeah, why are we still acting like, you know, the government didn't know what was going on? You know, what right. I mean? if if nothing else, if they didn't have any involvement with it, they knew what was going to happen and they let it go. If nothing else, at the bare minimum, they just let it go. Yeah, and that, that's crazy in itself. So now what Ben Crump and I were saying during that press conference is that with everybody being held accountable, like we got to see where Mayor Adams is at with it. Like we can't just like sweep all this under the rug because the NYPD is a part of this $100 million lawsuit. So what I want to do is I want to play a clip from this um, particular press conference. It's like I'm going to link it into the description, y'all, so that way you can watch it yourselves because it's a rather long press conference. But just to give you an idea of what's going on. So this is attorney Ben Crump addressing Malcolm X assassination 59 years later with the uh, revelation of two new witnesses. A legendary civil rights lawyer who works with the Chicago based the People's Law Office as well as attorney Ben Elson and attorney Hakeem Muhammad. They have a wealth of knowledge and history of holding the government accountable for the wrongful deaths of black leaders, the most notable being the death of Fred Hampton, that they litigated and recovered the highest award at such time for the killing of a black leader. And so the family of Malcolm X 
is honored to have them join our team. We are honored to represent Ilyasa and her sisters in what has been a quest for justice for 59 years today. They have been fighting to get to the truth, to finally hold NYPD and the federal agencies responsible for a conspiracy to assassinate their father, Malcolm X. I just wanted to say real quick, um, given that, that Ben Crump is taking this case on, do you think this kind of puts him, I hate to say this, but like in a crosshairs? Because now you kind of was, going, going If he to, wasn't already. If he wasn't already. I mean, because if, if you're dealing with, you know, the death of, you know, black people by police or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> But now you're talking about you're going after the CIA and FBI and all of these, and these things. Are, I think those things are so old. Like anybody that had anything to do with that is pretty much dead. You ain't worried about that or whatever like that. And this is how we usually get our money. You know, mm-hmm. this ain't nothing new. It's the same thing that happened with, uh, I think, with like Geronimo Pratt and Johnny Cochran. And, uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like After everybody's almost dead or close to death, you know, they start cutting checks. You know what I mean? Because they can't deny some of the truth. But what about the further black eye that it puts on something like the NYPD? NYPD has been dirty. I mean, they've been dirty, but this is like <laughs> we're talking about this. We're talking about this. What this? Mike, Malcolm X died in what sixty? Maybe what sixty eight? Something like that. I forget something what year. Like yeah, something like that in the sixties. Sixty five. Talking about the NYPD. Like we were talking about the NYPD in the sixties. <laughs> we know we know him in the seventies and eighties. <laughs> Yeah. Who knew, you know, what was going on in the 60s was horrible, you know what I mean? So they ain't had no credibility back there anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Ben, ben Crump, he's a smart dude, man. He's a real smart dude. I appreciate the work that he's doing. But I just wish he would find another spokesperson to speak because his speech make him sound yeah. low and dumb. I don't like that. Yeah, you he, know what's real, funny? He's he real niggerish. Yeah, hey, yeah, no shade at all now. No shade. I'm just being straight up. You know what, bro? You hit it on the head. I was looking for it for a long time. No, nah, he ain't. He he sound. He sounds like he has some sort of speech impediment or, or something is going wrong. But I, I, right. You hit it on the head. I've been looking for it, man. The yeah, reason, that's what it is. Man. He's a smart dude and he's passionate. I appreciate all of that. But he's not a great orator, man. No, he's not. He's not. It's yeah. like me. I love to sing, but the fact of the matter is, I can't sing. So right. I let somebody else <laughs> sing funny, but I love to sing. So he may love to talk, but don't don't the people that is not going to receive you as strongly as they could because of the way you sound. But you know what, though? It's funny that you say that, right? Because when we went to see him live, mm-hmm. even though he had that issue, the information that he was dropping was so important that mm-hmm. I enjoyed the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know what okay. I mean? But what you're talking about is like, and this is the problem I probably have when I'm over the years, because anytime I got to see him was through sound bites, you know, on right. the news and stuff like that. And I'm like, why is he talking like that? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and it, it would it would turn me off. So yeah, you're right, man. But uh mm-hmm. again, when I did see him in person, man, uh I like I actually his his information and stuff that he was giving out was inspiring, man. Yeah, yeah I can believe that. Yeah, definitely nice. was. Definitely was. Nice. I was. I uh I actually spoke to the brother after everything was over, and he had his hat cocked to the side, and like you know, it was just it was weird, you know what I'm saying? Being as though you just dropped all this knowledge and information, and now like you like regular dude. I appreciate it. I ain't gonna lie because it it it, it didn't make him seem haughty. So I actually did appreciate it, but it was yeah. just weird. Like, yo, bro, fix your hat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you still in the public? You ain't at the picnic yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I get it. Uh, you yeah, want yeah. you want you want them to be like Malcolm? You want to be militant, one hundred and ten percent? No, what no, mean? just 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 more polished. That's all. Just just, just yeah. polish because yeah. it, it's like. It's like McDonald's, right? You got you got McDonald's, and, and the building of McDonald's is nice and beautiful and clean all the time, nice and yellow and bright. And then you got another uh, place right next to it that may have better food, tasting food, but it's right. not as shiny as McDonald's. 
right. So right. By, by the human nature, a child, a baby, or anybody that's not got knowledge, they're gonna go toward the McDonald's. They got worse food right, rather right. than going to the restaurant that don't look so hot, but yet the food is better there, is better sure. quality. Better quality food, right? Right about. Yeah, I, 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 I like I like that analogy, and I, I'm 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 a you know jump on behind that and say uh, I'll wait in the line at Chick Fil A because they're so nice. You know, yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. The presentation mm-hmm. is so much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly, exactly. So you know, it, it works yeah. to have both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. You know. All right. So let me uh, tap on a little bit more of this before we wrap up, y'all. We've uh, had. Mr. Mustafa Hassan come forward, who was there in the Audubon Theater when Malcolm was assassinated. And he revealed new evidence, new information for the first time ever, that when he actually had captured, was able to grab one of the shooters when NYPD officers ran up, the first thing they said was, is he with us? Is he one of us? As they tried to help him escape. And Mr. Mustafa Hassan's observation. Now, today, we have two additional individuals who are for the first time talking about what happened 59 years ago. You're going to hear from Mr. Khalil Saeed Ramakrishna, and you're going to hear an uh, affidavit read by Mr. Walter Bow, who is 93 years old, who was one of the founders of the Organization for African American Unity, the organization that was founded by Malcolm X after he left the Nation of Islam. Present here with us are his daughter, Kai Bo, as well as Nandi Bo. Their father is having some health issues, and that is the reason he's not here with us today. So, yeah, um, like I said, this press conference, you're going to hear from a a lot of different people, but I'm going to link that in the description for everybody to take a look at, you know what I mean? Because I don't want to, in the interest of time, I don't want to go through the whole thing. But, yeah, what do y'all think? What's your thoughts on that? Pope hit it on the head, man. I can't take his speech, man. (laughs) (laughs) I I was looking for the answer, man, and I was like, man, what is wrong? (laughs) <laughs> that's it that's it <laughs> so that's what you got to, what, what you tapping on with J-Rob what you got it's funny because this hearing that that little sound bite he do sound like he needs somebody else to speak for him but the other night I don't know I don't know if it was the energy in the building but it just sounded like he he was he was hitting all the correct notes the other night well you know what it is I, I don't think he sound like that the other night you know what I think he's trying to do it's almost like he's trying to do like a, a jacked up version of Martin Luther King or something like that. You know what right. I mean? You know how he's talking? Well, he also <laughs> said, he also said the night that we saw him that you free know, at last that he was on free yeah. at last. <laughs> yeah, the night that we saw him that he was actually you know there's so many black people in the room that day, man. Maybe regular conversation. Maybe it was man. just a regular conversation. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's, thank that's, God that's, Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sound, man. You sound like you're doing a jacked up version of Martin Luther King, man. But the brother, like you said, man, the brother doing some good work, man. He's doing and, good uh, work, man. I want to, I want to diminish yeah. that with the speech, but I get what you're saying. But right. um, you know what I mean. Yeah. But what do y'all think about this case? What do you think about the new evidence on this thing? They got so much evidence on that stuff already, man. I don't even know what they can do to put that through. I mean, I think they even had a letter, and I talked to you about that earlier. Yeah, about, yeah. They had a letter from a. Um, from a guy on his deathbed, a police officer who was kind of, I guess, ashamed about his involvement in it. And he was saying it was all a setup. Right. I mean, they had a letter from a a man on his deathbed. He gave it to his cousin to read once he died. Mm. And it was something that bothered him from that point on. He sold, you know, basically sold out Malcolm, sold out Malcolm. And, uh, you know, again, they had a, they got a, 
an agent in the room giving a mouth to mouth resuscitation. And I, I, I thought the whole thing with the agent long time was for gazy, man, where it took you 26 years to come out about it. And then when you come out about it, you talk about how good you were and how you were helping them out and all the other stuff like that. But your goal was to stab them in the back. Right. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't get it, man. Like, it's not like they, they hired you to get in there and, and help them. You know what I mean? They hired you to get in there and destroy them. You know what I mean? So, and then somehow you ended up out of, out of all the people there, his wife's his nurse and everybody, you end up as the guy giving Malcolm X mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah, it don't make sense. Yeah, but 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 it seems like it's a reoccurring thing that is happening to all of our black leaders because if, even Fred Hammond, I know y'all seen Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah. His mm-hmm. closest um, bodyguard uh, turned on him. I mean, but he was an informant from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um uh, Al Sharpton come to find out that he was a government informant. He was working for the FBI. Yeah. And he was right there with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so so it's always going to be... Don't forget about uh, Jesse. Yeah, I was going to say Jesse Jackson. Has some... And what about Jesse? He was an informant too? Let me tell you something, man. The Rainbow Coalition. <laughs> what about that? Just the name of the Rainbow I mean, Coalition. They worth two cents well, to me. Well, you know how that whole thing kind of operated. is, you know, basically... If I walk in your company and I see that there's not enough black people here, you know, we're going to kick up some dust or right. you can kick out. You what, what's wrong with that? Yeah, maybe, what's maybe, but that's what I'm saying, though. You can kick up dust or kick out. You know what I mean? So. Uh, so you can hire some people where you can take a check, you know what I mean? Or you can give us a check. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Well, the Rainbow well, Coalition, I'll tell you one thing about the Rainbow Coalition that always ticked me off. And I remember Bill O'Reilly called him out on this a long time ago. And I ain't no fan of Bill O'Reilly, but I think he was telling them, like, yo, listen, like, you get millions of dollars to run this to run this organization. And we don't see what it does. The, the government pays, I think, one time or another, we're paying them, like, a few million dollars a year to run the Rainbow Coalition. Now, I'm from New York. I've lived in North Carolina and in Jersey, lived in Delaware different couple of places, all you brothers, Philly, Alabama, mm-hmm. you know, different places. Have you ever seen an office with a Rainbow Coalition operated out of? Never. No, no. Yeah, I mean, I, I, no, I, I can understand it because I've been to a, double, a couple of NAACP um, meetings and stuff, and they always in little rinky-dink spots, you know, nothing really professional looking. But you got to realize, man, there's so many hands in our suffering to keep us you know, in a in a working class position, there's so many games and tricks being played on us that we don't even realize and uh, don't even know what's going on. And then they got us going at it with each other, doing that work, you know, and 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 we don't trust each other. We don't have no resources. <clears throat> you can have a dude that got a, a plethora of knowledge talking to the young boys, but if he walking around with some bobo shoes on and, and looking dirty, they're not going to pay him no mind. You know, right. but we got to look the part to grab the attention of these young people or just black people, period. You know, like like I was saying about Ben Crump. Ben Crump got a lot of knowledge and stuff, but he's not the one to be in front of that camera all the time, you know, so, speaking like that. We need to have more leaders. Why Why are they just giving us this one Ben Crump? It's a lot of more black leaders out there to speak for us. I don't want to be in that one category where Ben Crump speak for me all the time. And you know what? I, I'm glad you said it because I think we were talking about this before, and I hate that. Because we don't know who the Jewish great lawyer is. You know what I mean? We don't know who the Chinese great lawyer is for Chinese justice or anything like that. It's only for black people. We got these, you know, you can name them. um, Johnny Cochran. um, William Gary. Yeah, William Gary. uh, What's the dude out of Harlem? Percy, whatever his name is. Percy Sutton. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. you can go back through history and you can pick out all of these great attorneys. uh, What was the... uh, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall and you know, why do we have like these just, you know, one time, like these generational, well, every other generation, we have this great black attorney that takes on these, you know, roles or whatever the case may be. And then other right. ethnic groups, you just have attorneys that just take on issues. Why is he the only one that's doing this thing? You know what I mean? Do you think, like, do you think maybe yeah. it's because most of the cases that take on, that they take on uh, involving our people are more publicized than say the Asian community or you know what I mean? No, I, I think what it so is. So they're going to be known? Is when there's something wrong in the Asian community they, you probably got people uh, you know 
fighting over to get to the to the problem. You know what I mean? Like for instance, not, not, not to mention it, it don't make in those other communities. Yeah. yeah, but in those other communities, their economics speak for them. Yeah. So they don't, they don't necessarily have to have a front man that's that's a lawyer because they can speak money. We can't mm-hmm. do that. I think I, I think I just think that they have people that are drawing straws to get at the opportunity to correct an issue. You know what I mean? Like we had a I lot think, of what, like a lot of Asian hate crimes that was going on, right? And those were very publicized, but I've never seen anybody take on any major Asian hate crime case and say this is the lawyer for that particular case or anything. But that's, like how, but that's how we are period is black people man. We always got to have like one good attorney one good leader or spokesman or something like that. You know what I mean? Like it's it doesn't seem like this happens in no other community but ours. You know what I mean? And again I think that's another thing too is I think you said it earlier Pope is that we allow them to choose these people for us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Who said Ben Crump was the guy? <laughs> you know right. what I mean? We right. just allow Where get his from? Yeah, they just catapult him into a position, and then you know, who says Barack was the guy? You know what I mean? Right. I mean, no, no, no. Let's let's say twenty years from now, we come to find out that Ben Crump was an FBI informant, and then we're gonna be all in shock like we are about Al Sharpner and and the rest of these guys that that pop up later. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just something so, that we we do in our community that's crazy. You know yeah, I mean? I'm 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 gonna say this and about Ben Crump. Um when you when, when you when you think of a person of that nature, of that ilk, you're looking to be dazzled by a brilliant speaker, a, a brilliant mind. And I didn't get that. I got I got regular person from him. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But I, I felt I felt but I still felt energized with what he was saying, but I didn't get, oh, he's so brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think when we left that meeting today, me and Mike was talking about it, and I was saying, like, we, it's funny that we brought up this conversation. Now. I was like, well, why is it only him? Like, why aren't there, uh, like, there's a brother in every state that's an attorney that's attacking these issues and different things mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like, why do we seem like we only have, like, one one guy to do it every now and then? You know I mean? and, and see, they put fear in us, too. They put fear in a lot of us because we don't want to lose our freedom. We don't want to lose our money, you know. And, and, and they control us like that because they know we don't want to lose those things. But like from what I understand, the, the people in Haiti, in, in Haiti, they don't mind dying for the cause. You know what I mean? You know, so those are some dangerous guys to to deal with because they would get out here and put it all on the line and be for real about it. We know it's hesitation. But that goes back but, to what we were talking about, that Malcolm X thing, where it's like, see, those Haitian people know that they don't have a hand in the process. You know what uh-huh. I mean? So it's easy to it's easy to stand up and go to war. You know what I mean? It's, it, but they Africa, were successful. They were certain, successful. They kept the British away by being that way. Yeah, but even also to in like Africans, I'm just saying that, you know, that, that whole voting process, man, takes your, take your mindset to say, well, we have some, we have a fight, you know, we have a hand in the process. A lot of these countries like that, these third world countries and different places, they know that we don't have any hand in the process. So what happens mm. is they're easy to revolt. You know what I mean? And then mm-hmm. the, the the scale from having to have not to so far from each other is like, we ain't got nothing else to do but fight. Yeah, not, not, I mean? not, not, not to mention in America, we see all the black leaders, they get killed. They're the one. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if you do have some knowledge of something and you're able to, you be, you're charismatic and you're able to, to lead a crowd and have people follow you, at what detriment is, is that to, to your family? You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, your, your family needs you, too. Like, right. I, I know the cause needs you, but your family needs you. Like, do you want to die trying to, trying, to, trying to save the people? A lot of people another, thought that way, though. A lot of people it's another, that way. It's another thing that's about black leaders, if you notice, the ones that get killed. It's not really about them getting killed because of, you know, what they're speaking on, you know, initially. Like, when you look at Malcolm X initially, he's a racist. He's talking some good things, but he's talking a lot of racist things. You look at uh, Martin Luther King and his thing was just civil rights and all the other stuff like that. But when that message becomes economic, that's when people get killed. You know what I mean? When you start talking about Mm -hmm. economics and you you take color out of the process. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you mm-hmm. start talking because I think we, we were talking about this one time. I think in the Birmingham jail, like I think they was talking about how there was a uh, 
a white CO that was that Martin Luther King was talking to. And he was saying to him, like, yo, y'all don't get no money. Like, the CO happened to show him his check. And he was like, yo, listen, like, you should be in here struggling with us because you ain't getting no money. And a lot of times they get played out of their position because they think they're part of the Republican process, but they don't know. They looked at as white trash and on the bottom of the barrel, whatever the case may be. But they think they, the only thing that makes them a Republican is their white skin. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So he was saying basically, like, I think. You know, that's when Martin started the poor man's march and all that other stuff. Like that. That's when he started getting killed. Nobody cared when you talk about this race stuff. But when you start talking about bringing cultures together right. because of the economic economic issues that suppress poor people all around the world, mm-hmm. you end up in a box. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> you know I mean? agree. That's how it is, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, fellas, I'm going to wrap this one up for the night, y'all. Another good conversation, guys. Okay, carry this on for another another hour or so just on that topic alone. All right, y'all. The only one my podcast is available on all major platforms. You stream your podcast on. Also, check out our only one my podcast YouTube channel to catch up on the past and current episodes. But please don't forget to rate the show and subscribe. Also, check out the shorts, y'all, if y'all want to get a taste of what the show is like. You can check us out on Instagram and X at the only one Mike P one. Facebook and LinkedIn at the Only One Mike Podcast, and you can contact us via email at the Only One Mike Zero Zero at gmail.com or call us at 302 367 7219 to have your comments and questions played on the show. We thank our audience once again for their time. And we encourage you, please, to speak your truth quietly and clearly and listen to others, even the dull and the ignorant, because they too have their story to tell. So until next time, please keep in mind that we never had to run from the Ku Klux Klan, so we shouldn't have to run from a black man. Peace. 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 Peace.